tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro for astrophotography. I'd like to give a big thank you to my buddy Mike Batiste who lent me his mount to make this video. So let's make a start. The mount comprises the tripod and spreader plate, the mount head itself, a DC power cable, 5 kilogram counterweights and a hand controller. Choose your setup site carefully, it needs to be firm and level and make sure you have a clear view of Polaris assuming you're in the northern hemisphere. Set up your tripod with the black peg pointing as close as you can towards the north. You may need to use a compass for this if you don't already know which direction is north. Then spread the legs out as wide as you can on the tripod. It's a good idea to extend the legs a little bit, even if you want the tripod very low, to give you adjustment in either direction when you're levelling the top of the mount. Now use a spirit level straddling across the joints of two of the tripod legs and adjust one of the two legs to get the spirit level to be level. Once you've done that turn the spirit level 90 degrees and then adjust the third leg if necessary to get that level as well. Now the top of your mount is level. Now bring the head into place and lower it down over the peg. You may need to make sure the two azimuth bolts are undone enough that they don't get in the way of the peg. Now you can screw in the threaded bolt that goes through the middle of the spreader plate. You may need to unscrew the bottom thumb screw first and then you can do up the top one fully. And you may need to wiggle the mount in order to, to get it to go in easily. Once the top one is tight, the bottom thumb screw can now be tightened up as well. Make sure that the three fingers on the spreader plate are engaged and pushing against the three legs of the tripod. Then make sure you tighten up the two azimuth bolts against the black peg. Now you can extend the counterweight bar and lock it off and remove the safety knob at the end of the bar so that you can fit the counterweights. Fit the first counterweight Make sure it's nice and tight as you have no protection against it dropping on your toes here. Note that I mount these from the side so if they do fall off they don't land on my toes. In this case I'm going to need two counterweights but depending on what you're mounting you may only need one. Now refit the safety knob at the end of the counterweight bar. Now you can mount your telescope. In this case my telescope has a Vixen interface but the mount also has a Losmandy interface on it as well. Do up the clamp, make sure it's good and secure so that nothing's going to fall. Familiarise yourself with the controls and connections on the control panel of the mount. We have the on off switch, the USB port for remote control, the hand controller port, the auto guider port, the DC power connector and the snap connector which is for taking photographs. Now it's time to fit your hand controller, your DC power cable, any other cables. Here I'm connecting USB for my camera, putting the dew heater on my guide scope etc. So fit all of your cables and then remember to remove any lens cap or telescope cover you have as it will affect your balancing. Now hopefully you're familiar with the two clutches. This is the declination clutch. Once it's open you can swing freely in declination and this is the right ascension clutch. Once this is undone you can swing the mount freely in right ascension. Now we can balance the telescope. Start by undoing the right ascension clutch and also the declination clutch. So both clutches are now open. We lay the telescope down so that the counterweight bar is horizontal 
and check the RA balance. In this case we're slightly telescope heavy so moving the weight slightly out along the bar until we get a good balance. Lock off the two counterweights in position and that's nicely balanced. We can now turn our attention to the declination balance. This needs to be done in two directions. So firstly in one direction if you do need to make an adjustment so that the Vixen bar is slid up or down make sure you return to this approximate home position first before you make the change so you don't strain any of your gears. Very small adjustments only are probably necessary. Here you can see the telescope is slightly front heavy. I've over adjusted. I need to make an extremely small adjustment back the other way to achieve balance. That's nicely balanced now. And then we turn it 90 degrees and check the balance again. If this is out, you need to rotate the telescope within its telescope rings. Now put it approximately into the home position. And now we can replace the dust covers and telescope cap to prevent any dust or other debris getting inside your telescope. The top of the polar scope on this mount is fitted with an adapter for a pole master. But if you're going to be using the polar scope, you need to have a clear line of sight through the polar scope. So looking down through this hole, unlocking the declination clutch and rotating the declination until the hole in the shaft opens up and you can see through back through the eyepiece of the polar scope. That's the position you need to be in when you do your polar alignment, otherwise you won't be able to see anything through the polar scope. I use a knee pad, probably my most precious piece of equipment, so that when I kneel down to look up through the polar scope, I don't hurt my knees. It is a rather uncomfortable position craning your neck to look up through the polar scope. Some people use a right angle adapter on it. You can follow my separate video tutorial for polar alignment. When you do your polar alignment, you'll need to adjust the azimuth bolts that you see here. These work in opposition to one another, so you're tightening one whilst loosening the other and vice versa. I'll put a link at the end of this video to my polar alignment video so you can see how to do that. And then these are the other bolts used during polar alignment. These are the altitude bolts. They also work in opposition to one another. The one on the right is a little awkward. It engages and disengages on the top of the, the, uh, the, the thread. When you're finished with your polar alignment, remember to replace the dust cap on both ends of the polar scope if you have them. There is a gauge for reading your altitude setting which should match roughly your latitude. Once you're polar aligned you'll need to put the, the telescope in the home position. Start by unlocking the declination clutch, use a spirit level to get the telescope nicely horizontal and then lock the declination clutch once it's level. Now you can undo the two screws on the declination graticule so that it can freely rotate. And then if you look on the underside, you'll see an arrow and you need to rotate the graticule until you get zero aligned with the arrow and then tighten off the two small thumb screws on the graticule. Now you can open the declination clutch and rotate in declination until you reach 90 degrees so that your telescope is pointing up to roughly towards Polaris and lock off the declination clutch. That's the home position done for declination. Now we need to do right ascension. Undo the right ascension clutch, rotate until the counterweight bar is horizontal, use a spirit level to get it exactly horizontal and then lock the right ascension clutch. There's also a graticule on the right ascension. Loosen the two small thumb screws on this graticule. And there's an arrow on the left hand side as viewed here. Here's the arrow. Rotate the graticule and line up zero with the arrow. Then lock off the two th small thumb screws. Now you can unlock the right ascension clutch and rotate in right ascension 
until you're at six o'clock and then lock the right ascension clutch and now you're in the home position essentially you're now ready your equipment is ready your cables are all done you're balanced and polar aligned and you're in the home position you're ready for a session at this point you would turn the mount on and follow the procedure for setting up the mount using the hand controller you can have a look at my HEQ5 setup tutorial which gives details of how to do this and I'll leave a link at the end of this video to that tutorial you'll need to jump to about halfway through the video to get to the part about the hand controller hope you found this video useful let me know any questions you have in the comments and I'll try and get back to you clear skies Thank you.